At the T-minus three-minute mark, tape recorders on board the spacecraft were turned on. These recorders record both voice and data. Back. This is Tom Prox from the Rocket Shop, and with me right now we got Tommy Ott from Matt Bradshaw, and and I'm sorry I'm going to butcher this last name, uh, but Alex uh, Wustenek. Close enough. Close enough. Yeah. Uh, they make up Fossa. How's it going, guys? Good. How are you guys doing? Oh, I'm pretty good. Pretty good. Um, yeah. Once again, we always like to kick off with a song. So, do you want to introduce something and uh, get going? Yeah, we'll play a uh, first tune for you. This one's called Bones. All right, take it away. In the old black hills that wouldn't let There was a tale twice told to me Don't run away, they said Now I'm messed up and I'm headed home I guess the life just ain't for me The only life I know from my dreams Gotta find another way they said You've gotta go alone Turn back home into the gray they said and When you find the pieces of your flesh Put them back on your bones But if you never make it that far
To wait till that's completely finished. Uh, that's a lovely little note to end it on. Uh, <laughs> Fossa there with bones. Um, so you guys are a little bit groove, bit funk, bit yeah. jam. Um, what what genre would you pigeon pigeonhole yourself into if you had to? Oh man, yeah, we <laughs> definitely try to avoid the pigeonholing. I think <laughs> I know, you nailed right? it right there, though. <laughs> I mean, we try to be uh, try to not limit ourselves to one style. We like so many different types of music that we want to try. Mm-hmm. incorporating different flavors in what we play um and who brings in what do you all have like different kind of styles uh, that you bring to the table or do you do you generally all kind of like have the same influences and the same styles and it just kind of ends up as a mashup um i would say like for the most part we have similar influences but uh but yeah i mean i think we all have different things that we're into and different uh different styles and genres that have influenced us over time and you know, obviously, we all like rock music. I would say, <laughs> I'd say that one's pretty pretty obvious. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, if correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm assuming you guys met at UVM. Is that would that be would that be correct? Yeah, we met via UVM. Uh, Alex and I both graduated recently, and mm-hmm. Matt's still in, in school at UVM. So that was the central location for us. Uh, what was the what was the story about how you guys formed initially? Uh, well, I was taking bass lessons at the UVM music call, you know, mm-hmm. and there was a poster that said, we, it was like, we desperately need a bass. <laughs> something really funny, and they just had the number, so I hit them up, and uh, we jammed, and it went well, so oh. we just kept playing together. Fair enough, and so you, you two were looking to start a band initially, and was it just a one play you were looking for? Was it just a trio that you, you were set out for, or were you looking for like an eight-piece, and you just kind of went with what you got? Yeah, well, definitely, I mean, originally... Me and Tommy had been friends for a couple of years and uh, and we had played together a couple of times and you know every time I was just like dang we really need a bassist to fill this <laughs> out but I mean now now that we've been playing for a while we've been thinking about trying to bring in a fourth member mm-hmm. of some kind probably a guitarist but who knows yeah I mean there's a um, a lot of weird and wonderful bands that have come out the the UVM scene actually uh, oh. with some some with some very odd combinations of uh, instruments yeah. and styles, um, ukuleles, uh, mandolins, a um, lot, lot of like stand up basses and whatnot as well. So would you do you guys ever incorporate something a bit weird, you know, like a you know, bagpipes? Ooh, I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't say no to it. Yeah, I I definitely love it. weird instrumentation. I'd uh, love to see some. We'd be interested in playing with some horn players and mm-hmm. stuff here and there, but um, yeah, we'd probably keep it keep it straightforward, probably. But you know, wouldn't say no to anything. All right, and um, especially in the last couple of years, there seems to be uh, there seem to be a lot of bands that have come out of UVM. Um, 
uh, Princess Nostalgia's out there yeah. at the moment. Uh, you got you guys, Kudo Stooge as yeah. well. Uh, what what is it about this generation of UVM graduates that have been so prolific when it comes to to music in the Burlington area? That's a great question. I mean, um, I think people come to UVM for a lot of reasons, but um, one of the reasons might be that there's definitely a thriving art scene in Burlington, mm -hmm. uh, definitely a thriving music scene. I know that's one of the reasons I came to Vermont. Um, I knew there was a lot of great bands that have come from here and uh, a lot of good music venues, small music venues too. So that's great for uh, for young artists like us. Mm -hmm. um, rather than big intimidating theaters and the right. bigger cities, uh, a lot of nice small bars and stuff. And People are excited about live music here still, which you don't find in every city. Yeah, that's real true. Especially things like radio being, a, you know, got five five live acts a day. and Oh, I know. It's it's great. You know, We're lucky to have radio being among the other ones like it. Yeah. Right. Um, and obviously, it's such a great history as well with uh, with Fish um, kind of paving the way, especially in the yeah. 90s for, for a really great scene here. Um, and um, with with all these great musicians coming out of UVM, have you guys had an opportunity to collaborate with any of them? I did see that you were on the bill for uh, with, with several great UVM bands. Um, have you guys ever just kind of sat down in the studio and jammed with them, or is it you know keep keep to your lanes? Well, I, I don't think uh, I don't think that's our attitude about it, like keep to your lanes. But um, but yeah, we haven't we haven't really played with too many UVM people. Um, I mean, we, we recently played a show at Sidebar with Lara Quass and friends, um, and I'm pretty sure she goes to UVM, right? <laughs> sure. yeah. Nice people do. About it's about a third of the city. <laughs> um, and um, I also saw that you did a mini tour in the summer um, across the Northeast. So you want to tell me a little bit about that? What stories came out of it? No, am I completely wrong on that one? I am so sorry. <laughs> that would have been fun. I, I but we actually, information. <laughs> we might have, we might have fed you some wrong information, but we were taking a little break this summer. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Well, sorry. My hour we're I did a little question. tour around the country, but not musical. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah just, <laughs> <laughs> just for funsies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, on that note, then I think we should listen to another song uh, and I'll, uh, I'll see if I can beat the next question. Uh, <laughs> What have you got for us? This next one's called Heart Gone Black. All right.
Heart Going Black there by Fossa. So, you guys I've noticed haven't really got anything recorded yet. Um, so, I'm wondering, like, kind of, uh, you've got obviously a good collection of songs together. What's uh, when's the plan to get into the studio? The plan? Yeah, it's a good question. <laughs> Um, yeah, we're still not really sure. We're definitely thinking probably in the next couple months we're going to try to head in and get some stuff recorded because we're definitely sitting on some stuff that we could easily record. So, yeah, yeah. what kind of collection have you got so far? How many, how many songs have you guys put together? I think we're up at like uh, 11 or 12, maybe 10, 11, 12 original songs. Okay. Um, some of which are more recordable than others, yeah. <laughs> but uh, somewhere around there. So maybe not a full album's worth, but at least an EP. Yeah, yeah. We're definitely thinking EP for our first release. Um, trying to do that ASAP. Yeah, we're definitely excited about that idea. Yeah, especially while you still got access to the EVM recording studios. It's, uh, oh, wow. Good point. Ma yeah. Make things a hell of a lot cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's been our barrier for sure. Yeah, it's, uh, it, uh, even though uh, recording at home these days is, is always is a lot easier than it used to be, it's... Uh, <laughs> It still takes a hell of a lot of equipment and a hell of a lot of money to be able to pull it off and a lot of skills to be able to produce yourself. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, do you guys ever do try and record at home or is it kind of like, you know, you just kind of get together and jam when you, when you get together? Um, I, know, I know Tommy records some stuff sometimes and uh, I have tried my hand a little bit at recording, mostly just like I play guitar also, mm -hmm. and, uh, mostly just things that I've written on guitar and... Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm certainly no no producer, sound engineer, <laughs> so it usually doesn't turn out all that great. <laughs> Bob makes it look easy, but it's a lot harder than you think. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> um, and like creative process wise, is is it just one of you that kind of brings the foundation and the other two build off it, or is it you kind of all come in and and build the whole thing from the ground up? It really kind of depends on the song. Mm -hmm. So like, I would say about two thirds of our songs one person brought in and then we all kind of learned our made up our own parts and then some of the other ones we like wrote the song together so we just started with like a little riff or something and we kind of just put it all together slowly is it kind of like a one and done thing you, you kind of uh, get these done in a, in a session or do you kind of mull them over and let them marinate for a little bit it's uh, definitely a process for us um i think we normally come in with like a pretty good idea of what we want it to sound like and uh it's just a matter of learning it and making it tight but uh we're kind of always altering things mm -hmm. and uh yeah they're a little bit flexible we like not playing it the same every time so yeah and it was, there's always always room for improvement you can always tweak it a little oh, bit yeah. always make it sound a, sound a little bit tighter um and are you drawing on anything for lyrics you guys sound like quite a fun band you know um you, you're not like digging the depths of your deep emotions and whatnot, or maybe I'm wrong, maybe you are. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, do, what do you kind of draw on when it comes to writing down the lyrics? Oh man, <laughs> that's a good question. I mean, I, I think a lot of the songs that I write, I take um, inspiration from things that I'm reading, mm -hmm. books that I'm reading, just because I read a lot and and you know, I hear great ideas from great writers and it inspires me to write something. Um, yeah. What books are you reading right now of interest? Um, well, I just finished Siddhartha. Um, I love that book. Yeah, really good book. I read uh, I read Dune not too long ago. That was really cool. Um, right now I'm reading uh, Wandering Home mm -hmm. by Bill McKibben, which is uh, pretty cool about a little... Um, a little hike through southern Vermont and New York into the outer Adirondacks. Oh, nice! So very, very topical is you around this area of the world. Yeah, definitely. If you've uh, if you've never any any other Herman Hess, uh, just Damien is by far his best in my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. If you've not read it, if you have read it, then uh, I have not. I've read uh, Steppenwolf, but. Uh, yeah, I've heard good things about Dana. Definitely, definitely read that one. Um, and is it all three of you that, that write lyrics, or is it just is it just you? Um, we typically, whoever's doing the majority of the writing of the song, writes the lyrics with it, mm -hmm. kind of as the package deal. Um, so yeah, we've all written lyrics. All right. And have you have you guys always been musical, or is this kind of a new phenomenon since you you went to college? I've, I've jumped around instruments a lot. I played drums when I was in like second grade. That lasted like three years. Mm -hmm. And I sang, and then I played guitar, and then I played trumpet. 
All right. Except seven on the base. Wow, well, you, I mean, you don't need to get another uh, a fourth member. You could probably <laughs> just pick up, pick up one of your other instruments and, uh, and give it a go. That'd be interesting. <laughs> um, and how about you two? Have you, have you guys always been pretty musical? Yeah, I've definitely been playing music the majority of my life, um, different instruments. Mm-hmm. Uh, didn't really settle fully on guitar until probably um, like eighth grade probably is when I really became a guitarist mm-hmm. rather than someone who just messed around on a bunch of different things. All right. uh, drums and piano mostly were the other ones. So you're all, you're all multi-instrumentalists then because obviously you play guitar as well. Um, yeah, yeah, you could say that. Yeah. Yeah. It's good, good to know if you uh, you could always just like sw- switch places at some point. Yeah. You know, <laughs> if we talked about that. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I remember seeing a band in Montreal, and after every single song, they just kind of rotated one to the one to the right, wow. and every single song was like kind of different. You know, they had like a certain like uh, same style going through all of them, uh-huh. but they e- each one was like slightly tweaked and a bit of a different genre based on who was playing. It was uh-huh. it was great, That's cool, great yeah. to watch. Um, so before I get you to play your last song, any, any, uh, gig gates coming up, anything you want anyone to know, anything to plug? Um, we have nothing actually scheduled right at the moment. We do have some stuff in the works. So, Mm -hmm. uh, I would say stay tuned. Uh, best way to stay tuned for us is social media. (laughs) Uh, so Facebook and Instagram or what, what we're working with. All right. Um, so I'm sure we'll be able to send you guys along links uh just look up fossa it's spelled f-o-s-s-a for all of you listening yep um yeah so stay tuned on those and you'll see uh as we post gigs wicked all right well i'll let you uh play off your last song what's what you got for us we're gonna do an instrumental one for you guys if that's all right, all right. excellent <laughs>
right, Fossa there with uh, instrumental track number one. Um, <laughs> I realized it wasn't instrumental, right? As I said that, we sing a, like a short verse in it. But yeah, there was a yeah that, bit in there. that one was called CD. CD. CD there by Fossa. The guys, thank you so much for coming in. Really appreciate it. Um, yeah, let us know whenever you get something recorded and uh, we'll get you back in again. Most definitely. And thank you so much to Big Heavy World and The Radiator for hosting us, guys. We appreciate yeah, thanks, it. Guys. Anytime, honestly. Um, uh, next week, we at the moment don't have anything on in store, do we, Bob? Day before Thanksgiving, Tom. It's we a are day. Taking a day off. I'm not. I'm, I'm not American. I got no idea. Um, <laughs> <laughs> actually, I'm not even here. I'm in England. What am I talking about? So yeah. Um, so yeah. No, no show next week is it's Thanksgiving. Uh, week after that, we've got the Giant Peach coming in. So stay tuned then. Uh, thank you guys so much. And um, yeah, this has been the Rocket Shop. <laughs>